Hello friends, welcome back. In today's video, we are going to be doing some in-depth Copic coloring. Now the star of the show is the Sweet Holiday stamp set illustrated by Kelly for Picket Fence Studios. I'm super excited to be using this set. It's gorgeous, it's illustrated beautifully, and I thought it would be great for demonstrating how to easily get some depth in your shadows. And I mean, who doesn't love cupcakes? Come on. All right, so here's a quick look at the set. Like I said, this is illustrated by Kelly Taylor happens to be my bestie. You guys know that if you've been here a minute. She's got two full-size cupcakes in here. One is decorated for Christmas. The other one can be used for birthday or any occasion you'd like. There's also some extra images in here for, you know, filling out your card. And then the sentiments in here are great as well. Now I'm going to be using the all occasion one, but I'm, I'm going to be turning it into a holiday card anyway. <laughs> Actually, I'll be making three holiday cards. When I make a video for you guys and I'm teaching you anything, I you I always do the technique more than once, uh, usually three or four times. I want to make sure that I've got the technique down and that it's not an anomaly, that it will work each time. And so this is my third time doing this and consequently that means I had two others. So I do end up with three cards in the end, but the start to finish card we are going to be doing is the red wrapper cupcake with the eat, drink, and be merry. So here I am putting this in my Misty. I'm gonna be stamping this with the Be Creative No Line Coloring Ink. I I cannot color, I can, I won't say cannot. I struggle Copic coloring or water coloring if there's a black outline. I don't know what it is. The black outlines are like giant stop signs for me. It curbs my creativity, it just hinders me. <laughs> so I'm much, much prefer no line coloring. But if you prefer, if you prefer that bold black outline, you could take the same technique, just stamp this with a black ink instead of the no line coloring. So what I'm gonna start off doing is coloring the majority of this image as if I'm coloring it in grayscale. So a cupcake wrapper is a series of peaks and valleys. So I've got my C3 marker and I'm gonna start by filling in those valleys or mapping in those valleys. Kelly has illustrated a lot of guidelines in here for you and you can use those as a guide. Now I am going to include the full process for coloring this cupcake. I'm going to speed things up where they're repetitive and then I'm gonna slow them back down when I need to provide instruction. But the cupcake wrapper is very repetitive. I'm just going through here, finding those valleys and marking them out for myself. And this is easy because the valleys and the peaks will alternate. So one will be a valley, one will be a peak, the next one will be a valley, then it'll be a peak. So it's pretty easy to keep track of. I also wanna quickly apologize for the lighting difference. I usually film at night because my light source is consistent at night, but I was filming this during the day and we were having a partly cloudy day. So you'll see here in the background, the lighting will get brighter and dimmer as we go. I apologize, I did not notice that it was uh, that apparent until I came in here to edit, so. All right, so we're gonna do the same thing at the top and the bottom. You can see here, I'm just going through and filling in a deeper shadow at the bottom, filling in those shadows in those valleys at the top, and then hitting back here where the cupcake wrapper wraps around the cupcake, putting in a little bit of deep shadow there. Now I'm gonna switch over to the C1 and I'm gonna extend those shadows. You would not have a full stripe of that C3 in your valley because you'd end up with stripes. You'd have a striped cupcake if you had all one solid color, right? So even your shadows are gonna have a, vary, a variance of depth. So there I was using that C1 to pull out that C3 so that your darkest shadows are only in the most recessed areas. Now I'm also going in and I'm putting a little bit of C1 on either side to the left and right of my peak because your peak is not going to be very broad, right? So even a peak as it rises, you're gonna have a soft shadow and then your brightest highlight is going to be right in the center. So I'm using that C1 to map in the rise of the peak. All right, so now it's time to do the same thing to our cupcake itself. I'm gonna start with that C3. I'm gonna put in my darkest shadows, which is going to be underneath the icing where the icing is touching the uh, muffin top or the cupcake top, and then around the edges. We're playing as if we have a center highlight here. 
And then everywhere that the wrapper is uh, rising at us at the peaks, you'll have a little bit of depth of a darker shadow behind those peaks. Blend that out with the C1. And make sure that you leave yourself some highlight. Now this, again, is just mapping in our shading and our shadows. So we're going to come over this with color. And it's not a huge deal if you don't have a massive highlight. Because our lightest color, when we lay our color over this, is going to become our highlight. So, all right. Now with that, our cupcake base and wrapper is pretty much done. We're going to move on to our icing. And the icing on this one's going to be white. We don't want to go too dark too quick because we do want this to read as white. So I'm going to use the C1 and I'm going to come in here and just map in my darkest areas. This is going to be where the icing is um, folded on top of each other, anywhere where there are objects laying on top of the icing. So underneath these flowers and then we're going to add just a little bit of shadow underneath each of the sprinkles as well. In this, I'm keeping in mind my light direction too. We decided that we're gonna have a center light source. So I'm pretty much making sure that this, the shadows make sense with where the light is coming from. All right, and if you've been here a minute, you know that I don't normally shade my whites with just grays. This is gonna make it appear very flat, very cold. So I'm gonna bring in a warmer, creamy color because it's icing. And you would have light, if, if you had a bright light shining on this, um, a warm light, you would have some warm shadows as well. And you would have some warm colors showing on that white. So here I'm taking that YR000 and I am adding that over top of those C1 shadows. So this is going to warm up those shadowed areas just a bit. And the icing is going to be a work in progress. Uh, we'll keep working on that throughout. I'm just basically mapping in those shadows and giving this icing a little bit of shape right now. All right, so now I'm gonna come in with an E00, do the same thing, and this is going. This is how I'm gonna deepen some of those deepest shadows. Instead of using that C3, I'm using the E00. And now I'm using the W0 to glaze over that E00 and just knock that vibrancy back a little. A little zero blender pen to soften the edges of those so we have a softer transition. And right now it's going to look crazy, but it'll all come together in the end, trust me. All right, now we're gonna move on to those flowers. And again, we're gonna start with our C3, just like we did with our cupcake base. We're gonna add that C3 to our deepest shadows, which means we're not gonna have a ton of it. Once we've mapped that in, we're going to take that C1 and we're going to blend that out a little bit. This time we'll come out a little bit further. And again, this is going to be all of our mid-tone, basically. Everything that we're leaving white will be our highlighted area. All right, I'm gonna grab that C3 again and we're gonna work on the uh, other two flowers here. Again, very little of that C3 on these. And then pull that out with the C1. But you can see how this image is now starting to look like a grayscale image, like it's colored in black and white. But all of the elements are taking shape and you can tell what they are. I'll just continue this uh, C1 and C3 for the leaves in this. And then it will be time to move on to adding our color. All right, and you can see here, this is definitely recognizable as a cupcake with flowers on it. And I didn't even worry about these littler florals. We'll fill those in at the end. All right, so now it's time for the magic. I've got an R29, R35, and R22. These are the three colors we're gonna to use to color our cupcake wrapper. I'm gonna start with the R29, and I'm gonna go over everywhere where I had the C3, where it's the darkest. This is going to be our shadow or shade color. And you can see here as I lay this down, how having that layer of C3 underneath it not only guides me in where to put my color here, but it also dulls the vibrancy of that red. 
and makes it a little bit deeper. So we're going to get two levels of color out of just this R29. The areas where it's going over the C3 are going to be much darker, and the areas where it's going over the C1 are going to be much lighter. Having that layer of the C markers underneath this uh, actually makes this one marker behave like two or three different colors because where it's over the C3 it's going to be deepest where it's over the C1 it's going to be a little bit lighter and if it is over just plain white it's going to be even more bright so basically we're getting three colors out of this one marker this is also going to go much quicker because we do have that roadmap already laid out for us and where we need to be adding this darkest R29 color Another thing you'll notice is I'm not being overly concerned about making my lines perfectly straight. Uh, they're not all the same width and they don't all end or begin at the exact same spot there as they're going up the wrapper. Most things in uh, life, if you look at them, when you're looking for realism, they're not. there's not a hard start and stop point when it comes to the, sh the shadows um, unless you've got a very harsh light shining on it then you will have very hard shadows. Now I'm coming in with that R35 and I'm doing the same thing that I did with the C1. I'm blending out that R29. So the C1 we used to pull out and blend the C3. Here we're using the R35 to pull out and blend that R29. And I'll be filling in most of my cupcake with the R35 because this is going to be basically my true color of the cupcake wrapper. So the R35 is the true color or my midtone. The R29 is what I'm using for my shadows. And then I will come in finally with that R22 and that will be my highlight color. I'm just gonna swipe this over the entire image and it's going to soften some of those blends because it is a lighter color and that means it has more solvent in it. And then it's also going to fill in the rest of the white space, white spaces. So anywhere I need to add a little more definition, I'll just work back through my colors, adding in a little R35. And then um, now that all of my colors are a little bit softer, I'm going to take that R29 and deepen up some of those shadows. Here I am just adding a harder shadow at the top because the way this uh, cupcake was illustrated, it looks like that top is fluting out just a bit. So I'm just adding some deeper shadows at the top to give the appearance of the cupcake wrapper kind of doing that little fluted, that little fluted thing where it comes away from the cupcake. I'm also deepening up some of those shadows at the bottom. Remember that R22 marker that we've put all over it, it will lighten some of those colors so it's, it helps to come in afterwards and add in some of those darks. So while we're working on the reds, we're going to go ahead and do our flowers. Again, take that R29 and just put it over where we had the C3. And we can come out a little bit further this time because remember, the R29 is going to give us different levels of color depending on what's underneath it. Pulling that R29 out with that R35. And again, this is our midtone, and it's also going to be the true color of our flower. So you'll have the most of this R35. But you again can see how this is coming together. I don't have to do very much blending. I don't have to fret or fuss over creating shadows with the colors now because we did all of that work up front by mapping it in using our C markers. Now you could definitely use W markers if you wanted your shadows to be warmer. I knew we would be using red and I wanted those cooler uh, shadows here on these guys. But just like on our icing on our cupcake, I did go a little bit warmer. You could definitely do that here if you wanted to. Finally, I'm gonna come in with that R22. I'm gonna be using the least of this one, it's our highlight. And I'm just going to fill in any areas that are left. And this again is going to lighten up some of my shadow colors. So if need be, I'll come in with my R35 or my R29 and touch up any areas that I need to touch up.
Now this isn't the only way to do underpainting to add your shadows and I'll have some more videos coming up uh, coming up in the future so make sure you're subscribed and make sure that you click your notifications if you want more in-depth coloring tutorials. Uh, I'll show you how to use contrasting colors and underpainting to create your shadows as well. This is just by far the easiest way to create instant depth, instant shadows without having to do too much thinking, right? You don't have to think about your complementary colors. You don't have to think about the temperature of the colors. You can, for beginners, just even heck it's not just for beginners if you want to color an image quickly and have some interest shade with your C markers first super easy all right so next up we're going to just put in the center of this flower and this is incredibly easy we're just going to use a series of dots uh, stippling motion a little bit of scumbling I'm going to start with E39 and just add in some dots around the outside and a few in the center. Then I'm going to take E99, do the exact same thing, and then Y21, and again, the exact same thing. Okay, moving on to our cupcake base, and I'm going to apologize. The camera's going to shake here for a minute, and then it will uh, stop. So sorry about that. I must have hit the stand with my leg when I was getting markers. All right, so we're going to start with E99. This is going to be our darkest color for our cupcake itself. And following that map that I put in in the very beginning, we're going to put this over the C3 areas and then bring it just a little bit further than that. Because again, where it's going over that C3, it's going to be dark. And then as I pull it out over that C1, it's going to get lighter. Then I'm going to take YR24. And we're going to use that to pull that last marker out going over all of the C1 that we had blended in with our shadow mapping. I'm going to go ahead and follow the base of the or the top of the cupcake wrapper here. This YR24 is going to act as my shadow color where the cupcake wrapper is right up against the cupcake. Now I'm going to come in with that same stippling motion that we used for the center of the flower. And we're just going to add a little bit of texture so that we don't have these super smooth breaks between our color. It is a textured cupcake and you know, we don't want it to look super smooth and silky. We want it to look like it has some texture. Adding that YR24 to the very edges of our cupcake because it's rounded and it would be catching some light around those uh, rounded edges. And then that Y21 to fill in the air, the rest of the area here. Now we're going to want to blend this together. We don't want this big bright highlight, uh, but we do want, you know, some light to be reaching it. So this is again where our stippling is going to come in and we're going to stipple back and forth between all of our colors. So I'm going to blend in and now I'm going to stipple and close up that gap just a little bit. I'm not really closing it per se. I don't want to bring it in further solidly. I want to bring it in further by using those stippling dots so that we have breaks in the color. And so we have some brightness from that Y21 uh, showing even into the areas where it's going into shadow. And you'll notice that we're using the exact same color combo here for the cupcake that we used for the center of our flower. This is going to keep our colors uh, harmonious. Come in and do that stippling motion with the Y21. Two layers of Y21 is going to be darker than one layer. And then we'll also blend it into that YR24. Finally, we'll pick up that E99 and we'll add some stippling into our shadowed areas as well. And again, two layers of E99 is going to be darker than one layer. So we'll be able to see just a little bit of this texture by the variance in color. All right, so now it is time. What did I tackle next? Let's find out. Ah, the leaves. Okay, so we're gonna use YG17, YG25, and YG03. And 
just like before, you guessed it, we're going to start with our darkest color. We're going to come in where we had our C3. And then we will blend that out with our YG25 and finish up with our YG03. Now I do tend to be a little more free form with my leaves. This is where you can kind of have some fun. You can also do that with your florals. Um, but I tend to go back and forth between my colors to create folds and creases in the leaves, pull out some of those veins. It's, it's one of those things that I'm always trying to strive to improve my leaves. So anytime I'm coloring a leaf, I can't help but add... Um, I go back and forth. I can't, I, I'm always experimenting, trying different techniques with my leaves. Um, I, I've gotten it down to a technique that I'm pretty happy with, uh, but there's always room for improvement. But for the most part, just like you did everything else, YG17 over your darkest areas, blend that out with your YG25. That's going to be your mid-tone or your true color of the leaf. And then your YG03, which is going to be your highlight. Here you can see I'm just adding in some more uh, shadow in that leaf because I just mapped in a general idea of the shadows when we did the grayscale mapping. And here I really have the latitude to come in and make some edits and changes by just deepening up some of those shadows, extending them, adding them where I didn't have them before. Just remember that mapping is your, it's a good basic guide, but it doesn't mean that you can't make some small changes here and there once you get into adding your color. And you can see we're getting very close to finishing up this image. The icing, uh, there's going to be very little that we need to do to that because it is white. Uh, just our shadows, that's basically all we needed to color in. We will finish up these leaves and I want to say I'm looking at the footage here and it took me, let's see, 20, 24, 45, an hour. It took me an hour to color this image. So that's not too bad, uh, especially since, uh, I mean, it is a simple image, but there is lots of detail. So I don't think that that is too bad at all. For these small leaves, I'm just doing solid swipes of color, adding the Y25 for the stems. And then for the berries, I'm just adding a little flick of R29 and then a little circle of the R22. And that's going to give me berries with just a hint of a shadow. They're tiny. They're really tiny, so you could totally do this with black color and not worry about it. For the stems, we're going to use a little bit of that E99. And again, we are reutilizing colors that we've already used elsewhere just to keep those colors harmonious. All right, so now it is time to do, I think we're going to do the sprinkles, you guys. Yes, we're going to do the sprinkles. R22, straight line. I'm just filling in a straight line for those sprinkles. And then I will take the R29. I lied to you. I forgot some leaves, so we're filling those in. <laughs> and then we're going to use that R25, it, again, just to put some little indications of stems here. I'm not drawing a complete stem, just creating a little flick from each of the base, from the base of each of the leaves, gives the illusion of a stem. Okay, we're good to go. Now we're going to come in with that R29. I know I use R20. Yep. Come on. R29. Now we're going to use R29. We're going to make just a little thin line using the very, very tip of the marker underneath each of our sprinkles. That's going to give them a little rounded appearance. Now, if you are smart, you can use a colored pencil to do this. A sharp colored pencil is going to be much easier to do this than the Copic marker. However, I love to work harder, not smarter, apparently. So <laughs> tip from me to you. These little tiny details here, if your marker nib is uh, not in great shape or you're just not a glutton for punishment, grab a colored pencil. Grab a dark red colored pencil and do this instead of using your marker. Thank me later. All right, and you did not think we were done, did you? No, no, no. You could have been done, but not me. Again, I work harder, not smarter. So here we go. I'm just adding in a tiny bit of depth in those shadows. So coming in again with that R29 and that R35, I felt like these back flowers were just a little flat 
and by just adding another layer of my colors, I'm able to kind of uh, deepen up those shadows and you can definitely see the difference here. It adds a lot. Again, these tight small spaces, this would be another great place for your colored pencils. I'm just a glutton for punishment. <laughs> Okay, for the final finishing touch on the icing, I grabbed the BG70 marker and I'm gonna add just a little bit of shadow here, a little bit more into this icing, but I did want a little bit of a cooler shadow to uh, offset those warmer tinges of color, those war warmer hints of color. I just think that it makes it a little more interesting, a little more realistic. Nothing too crazy here, just a few touches here and there. All right, so that's it. Now it's time to turn this into a card. And I love the way this turned out. Like I said, this is my third. The second one I did very similarly to this one. And then the first one is completely different. The first one I did. So let's take a look at those. Okay, so all three of these were colored with that same method of coloring it in grayscale first using the C3 and the C1 markers. So my first one, I wanted to go with the clearish cupcake wrappers where you could see the muffin through it. Mm, I didn't really love how this one turned out. I do love the wrapper. That one turned out great. But this one, I prefer the flowers so much more. I think this one turned out much, much better. Uh, but the icing, mm, it was okay. Love the wrapper and the muffin itself, the cupcake. But the third one here, I love, I think I love this one the best, maybe, I don't know. I think that two and three both have their charms, but this is a great example of the more you do something, the better you will get at it. You can progressively change things that you didn't like about the previous one, and each one is going to be quicker than the last. Each each time you do it, you're going to get faster and better. So let's turn one of these into a card. This is the image we just colored. I'm gonna use the coordinating dies here from Sweet Holiday, and we're gonna die cut that out. I also colored and cut out some of the extra elements included in the stamp set, and we're going to uh, add those to our little cupcake here. But first I wanna make our background. I'm gonna use the Inner Glow A2 stencil here and we're gonna use some transparent gloss texture paste. I originally thought I was going to use this one. I do end up making another one just on white, but this is the one I filmed, so all of the steps were the same. So I'm using this Ranger transparent gloss texture paste and I'm gonna use a palette knife to just spread this through the stencil. Now mine is getting old, so it's a little bit, um, <laughs> it's a little bit thicker than it should be. I need to buy, buy a new jar. But I've had this for quite a while. Using the press and seal on the top of your jar here really helps to extend its shelf life. I think I've had this one for at least two years and it hasn't dried up yet, so that's saying something. So I'm just gonna take my palette knife, I'm gonna spread this over the stencil and then I'm going to take this and I'm gonna put it in the sink. I'm gonna put it directly in the sink to clean it off. You do not want this paste to dry on your stencil or your palette knife. All right, so while this is still wet, we're gonna pour some Distress Glitter on this. This is the Rock Candy Distress Glitter. Then I'm gonna shake off the excess and set this aside to dry. It will dry completely clear and leave behind just that sparkle. And it is so subtle and so pretty and it's the perfect backdrop for this cupcake. And while that's drying, I'm gonna go ahead and stamp out my sentiment. I'm gonna use some Be Creative Intense Black ink and I'm using the Eat, Drink, and Be Merry stamp from the Another Joyx, Another Joyx Noel. That's what I used. <laughs> another Joyx Noel. So I'm gonna stamp that and then use the coordinating die cut. And now we have all of our pieces to create our card. Oh, but wait, you didn't think we were done, did you? No, no, no. We've gotta add some more glitter because Christmas. Christmas is not Christmas without lots of glitter. So I've got the multi matte medium here and a small paintbrush and we're going to add some more of that rock, like rock candy glitter to all of our elements. So for the candy canes here, I'm gonna take a thin layer of this over the red pieces, over the red portions, and then I'm just going to dunk it straight into my rock candy glitter here. And then that's going to adhere everywhere where there is some multi matte medium. And then I've got these cute little glittered candy canes. I did the same thing to the leaves on the holly there. And then here on the cupcake, I'm just adding some to the icing so we can get some sugary look to the icing. 
love how this turned out. So all that was left to do was to assemble the card and create cards from the other two cupcakes. So let's take a look at how those turned out. And apparently I forgot to film the wrap up section. <laughs> so we're gonna have to do the wrap up in photos. Here's a quick shot of all three of the cards together. And then individually, let's take a look. So here's the card that we just finished. I think that it turned out beautiful. We've got that sweet holiday paired with the inner glow stencil and then the another joyix noel uh sentiment there love how this one turned out and all the glitter just makes it even better now the second one here i decided to trim this down to a smaller panel and i paired that large joyix noel uh sentiment there with this cupcake and i think that this is gorgeous i did a little bit of masking there on the edge so it looks like the sentiment is behind the cupcake I also added a little glitter to the sentiment. And now for our third card, this one is the first one I colored, not my favorite, but I think that it turned out beautiful. Again, I did mask the cupcake, stamped that Joy X Noel so that it looks like it's behind it. And then some of it is weaving through it and added a little bit of glitter to the flowers on this one. So there you have it. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video and you'll give this technique a try. Let me know in the comments below, have you tried it? Did it work out well for you? Or would you like to see more videos like this where we include the full coloring process? This underpainting technique also works wonderfully with watercolor and I will definitely have videos for that in the future. So if you're not already, make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss that. And if you did enjoy this, make sure you give it a thumbs up. The featured products will be linked in the description box below. So if there's anything particular that you were looking for, make sure you check there. As always, I want to thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.